very well. Uh, we've delivered a draft of the report and the uh, board communication to the uh, staff. Um, I, uh, uh, you do have it, right? Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. so, so if you'd like, I could go through it very quickly or direct uh, the, the, our attention to the dinosaur in the room with, or the gorilla in the room, however you say it, uh, which is the uh, issue that we're going to run into with the comptroller. Um, Why don't you a talk little about bit that first and then go back so that'll uh, sort of tee okay. up because it sort okay. of frames some of the other things in the letter. So as far as I know, the, the, the library has been on the cash basis for quite a number of years and that's always been acceptable to the state comptroller and it's always been allowable under state statute. Nothing has changed to state statute that would indicate that the comptroller decided anything differently. They sent out many letters to uh, all the uh, uh, governmental bodies in the state saying that they will no longer accept that. Initially they said they wouldn't accept it for 2017, then they rescinded that and said beginning in 2019 they will no longer accept the cash basis audit. Basically the Illinois CPA Society, uh, ILA, and tons of other organizations all petitioned them to reconsider at a very minimum, instructing them that they would have to change Illinois state statute, but also to delay implementation to give each individual cash basis body a, uh, a, a time to change, literally. Doing it as of 2017, we would have had to go back and calculate what the accounts payable, accounts receivable, accrued payroll, vacations payable would have been in 2016, record that, back that out, and then record the new payables and receivables. And we thought that was a waste of most people's time since we'd already opined on those financial statements in the past and it was acceptable to the state. We think that cooler heads will prevail in the comptroller's office and they will continue to allow cash basis. Uh, going forward. It would be a tremendous burden to a number of entities to hire somebody to convert their books to from cash basis to full accrual and then find an auditor to do that. We're really thinking more along the lines of the rural areas where they may not have access to both mm -hmm. multiple auditors and another accountant to give them a hand or other type of expect, uh, expertise. So we believe that it won't come to fruition in 2019. However, we are advising our clients to just submit cash basis for 2017, and then as we get closer to the 2018 audit, revisit it, and should it look like it's going to go through and re in full accrual will be required, we will assist the library in documenting as of June 30, 2017, what would be the accounts payable, accrued payroll, vacations payable, all of those types of items so that they're ready to be audited next uh, in 2019. And that would make it a lot easier in 2019 to do it. We wouldn't actually do the work unless we were hired to do it, but we would certainly lend instruction and guidance and uh, examples to staff so that they could do it themselves. There's no sense in paying for something you may not need is basically our position. Does that make sense? Yep. What is the basis for the comptroller's position? Um, not sure. Way. Other than <laughs> that, the, the, the point as, as an accountant and as an auditor, we, might, we prefer full accrual. And the reason for that is it's, it, it's, it shouldn't be possible to um, affect equity and cash on an annual basis simply by sitting on invoices and not paying them when they're due mm -hmm. and, or accelerating payments in order to manipulate equity. And that's always a possibility with cash basis. Is that tied to the current conversation in the state over the governor's veto of the debt transparency act? This is separate and apart from all budget discussions and, and other financial or fiscal mm -hmm. discussions there. The comptroller as a, is new, right. as a new attorney, as new staff, and but they have an issue with cash basis. 
And what, what's more common, say, across business, across governmental entities? What method is more common? In Illinois, we have well over 6,000 governmental en entities, mm -hmm. and it's my understanding over half report on a cash basis. Most mm -hmm. of those are the smaller and more rural entities, mm -hmm. but there's a great number of school districts throughout the state, regardless of size, regardless of geography, that are cash basis. Mm -hmm. um, Is a curl more accurate? Dan, yes. could you speak up just a little oh, bit? Oh, sure. Excuse me. Is a curl more accurate? It would be more accurate because it would show truly <clears throat> what is due and payable as of June 30 and receivable. Mm -hmm. the, the library really doesn't have much in the way of receivables. Um, room rentals, fines, and things mm -hmm. like that would be immaterial. But, you know, the, the accrued payroll and the vacations payable could be substantial and mm -hmm. as most especially the accounts payable. So you just get a more accurate snapshot? Correct. Okay. Exactly. Is there any downside? Is there the, any other the downside? The downside is cost and, and expertise mm -hmm. in-house to create uh, full accrual uh, financials. Is it a one-time thing or does it? It's an annual thing. It's so that once the person is trained and the mm -hmm. systems are in place, it shouldn't be. It should we, be. We however, CPA if you're only doing it once a year, mm -hmm. you, you I mean, may we forget. Are, we are well positioned, I think, should this come down because we currently have a CPA who does our books. For the, for the um, time being. For me? I, I understood. She's, she is a CPA, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. So probably is, we are somewhat better positioned Absolutely. than some other entities of similar size True. to make this adjustment should we need to do this. And it reaffirms our thought that we like having a CPA in that role and will continue to. But as of right now, we don't really know what way it's going to go, but there should be more clarity um, in the coming in the spring mm -hmm. as to whether or not we have to maintain the books in on an accrual basis starting with our next budget year. Is the state on an accrual basis? Oh yeah. Yes. Yes indeed. That's ironic, considering how far behind they are in meeting a, their obligation. There's a lot of red ink in there. <laughs> well, with that sort of aside, so, uh, issue that is out there, why don't you uh, tell us what we sh need to know about the draft of the audit that you provided us? By the way, when I was hired by the board, you all asked me what I thought of the cash basis, and I asked you who's asking to see 